coming into a straddle. The person with the deeper straddle is gonna to wanna to set up their whip and then the partner um, that might have a little bit tightness in the hips can come into whatever point works for them. So they can have their, if feet don't go feet to feet, then just foot to calf is fine. We're gonna hold hands here because our hands are close enough, but if your hands aren't close enough, just include the strap again. And seesawing with the breath, you can bend the elbows if needed to find again that appropriate depth of your stretch. coming up through center. If any of these want to be held for longer amounts of time or shorter amounts of time than what we're showing, feel free to do so. And then we're gonna come into a balanced boat pose. So having feet to feet and hands to hands. Again, strap is uh, helpful if needed to get your hands to touch and we're gonna See if we can lift our feet up and find that boat pose. Now from here, if you can, maybe straightening the legs. And then gently coming back down. Let's come all the way down to the ground. And it can, the heels can come down quite hard if you're not careful. So just having that mat or even your blanket um, underneath you for the heels. And then here we're going to come into boat pose with the legs separated, maybe straightening them, really using those inner thighs to keep the legs from splaying apart. And again, coming in carefully and gently. Now that's a little bit more um, advanced, so if you don't feel comfortable going into that shape, feel free to bypass there. All right, going back to back. Yes. So this next one again is about teamwork and a little bit of trust, definitely working together. Um, if you find it difficult, feel free to move on to the next one. Having a little crash pad is helpful in case you don't make it up um, or you come down to the ground. Have a blanket underneath you just to catch your sits bones on the ground. Dan is taller, so his arms come over the top. And we want to start with our, our feet pretty close into us. It's going to make it easier to stand up. So we'll count together and on three we'll lift. One, two, three. And we just come into that chair pose. So if you're too far apart from each other, you guys can scoot your feet closer in so that you want to make sure your backs are fully connected. So we're working strength together as we Stand in this pose and to come out, simply straighten the legs, walk the heels in. If you need to practice that a few times, try it out. Feel free to hit the pause button and then come back to the video when you are ready to move on. The next thing is chair pose, standing um, face to face. And again, you're going to play with the space between your feet here, how far apart you're standing. So. As we lean back, our arms straighten, and then we bend our knees. So if you're too far apart, what will happen is one of your partners will have a rounding in their back to reach. If you're too close in, you'll notice your arms will not be able to straighten. So finding that place where arms are straight, knees are right over ankles, back is straight. From here, we can also add a twist. Let's start with just one twist. So I'm gonna hold on to Dan with two hands so that he can twist. Oh, he has a wall in his way. So I'm gonna show this instead. He can hold me with two hands just to feel nice and safe. I'm gonna reach back and open the shoulder. 
But if you get to a place where you're comfortable to do so, you can hold one hand and you both twist at the same time. Hopefully you have enough room to reach all the way back. Coming back. And you can do that on both sides. and then coming up to stand, great. Okay, the next is going to be a half moon pose. So you're gonna stand um, side by side. You're gonna have your strap or belt for this one. All right, so we're gonna take hand to hip and we're pressing into that iliac crest, the top of the hip bone. And then we're going to lift our arms up and we're going to walk our hands closer together to get that good side body opening. So, wow, we're at a place where our hands could almost touch. We can also deepen it by making our feet a little further apart or really pushing our hand into each other's hips to open that. Notice if you're chest is dropping down at all, your heart's dropping down, try to keep that chest open and arm overhead. All right, and then we'll slowly release. You get the strap. And you'd want to do that on both sides, so you just switch. Good, and that doesn't seem like it matters whose arm's in front of whose for this one. You might have to play with the space between each other's feet. And just releasing whenever you both feel ready to do so. All right, the next one is uh, Warrior. So, We'll start with our right knees bent. So we'll have heel to heel or maybe heel to midfoot. You want to make sure your knees are touching um, so that you can kind of find that traction knee to knee. This helps to open your warrior two shape. So remember warrior two, our front leg is bent our back leg is more towards straight, and those back toes are pointing to the side wall. I'm gonna reach back, grab Dan's back arm. He is reaching and grabbing my back arm. So right, sorry, left knee is forward, left arm is reaching to your partner's arm. You can look over your back shoulder Just a gentle twist. So finding how much, how deep you want to go on that twist. If you want to go deeper, you can tell your partner to give your arm a little bit of a pull. And then talking to each other, who wants to go first in their reverse warrior? Dan, you can go. So he's, I'm going to keep holding his arm. He's in kind of a bind as he inhales and opens that top arm. And then as he exhales, he's gonna grab my hand and I'm gonna breathe in to find mine. Flowing between these, looking up at that top hand if it's comfortable on your neck. Feel free to look down if that feels better on your neck as well. And when both partners feel balanced or the legs get fatigued from holding this lunge, we'll gently release, straightening the leg. And you just wanna make sure you do that on both sides. But for time's sake, um, just hit pause and do the other side and then resume the video when you wanna see what comes next. It does come next. Um. <laughs> so, 
notes. This is what comes next. Downward facing dog. <laughs> so you're gonna come, one of the partners can start in downward facing dog. Feel free to come into that shape, pedal out the heels, walk out your dog to get comfortable there. And then the other partner is going to assist to start. So bring your dominant leg, your stronger leg forward between their hands. Take your hands right to their sacrum and then give a press. So you're finding length through their spine, taking some weight off of their wrists and hands. After you give them an assist in that way, you can come around to the back. Again, dominant foot comes between their legs. Take your hands to those hip bones, the top of the hip there, and give a nice pull back here. And because your dominant foot is between their legs, you really can feel like you're able to pull. Take as much weight as you can off of their wrists. If your partner needs to come down in between these to shake out, they can. And this last one's just optional. Um, a double downward facing dog. So I would place my hand somewhere in front of Dan's looking at where you're placing your feet. You're trying to land right where those hands were for the first assist. So now my feet are pressing onto his low back or I can take my feet to his hips and sort of press his hips back with my feet. And then you just want to come down carefully there. And it's a little bit more strenuous for the person on top as my shape is gonna be a little bit more right over my wrist. So just try not to hang out there longer um, than what's comfortable for you. Hit pause and do the same thing on the other partner. All right, the next thing we come into is locust pose. So one partner comes to the floor if they need to do any warming up of their back, a few more of those cat-cow flows or baby cobra might be helpful to start. There's gonna be a lot of pressure in the midsection of the body. So if you wanna place your blanket under the pubic bone, feel free to do that before coming into this. So partner A, hands are down, palms facing down, chin is to the mat, and I'm gonna come up and straddle his back. So as he lifts on a breath in, I take my hands to his pectoral muscles and just give a gentle pull back. Again, I'm not straining my back at all. I'm in a nice sports stance and I'm just leaning back. And just as long as your partner feels comfortable, communicate to each other. When they come down, have them come to one cheek and give their shoulders a nice little release. Massage. Again, taking care of your body while you're massaging. Try not to cause yourself any discomfort being over the top of your partner. If you need to come down to kneeling or something more comfortable, take your time to do that. The next time they come up, so they'll do this locust pose three times. The next time they come up, you're gonna grab onto their hands and you can kind of just hook your fingertip to fingertip here. Again, my sports stance, I'm just leaning back. If you feel like your fingers are digging into your, or your fingernails are digging into your partner, Dan and Abby come down just for a moment. You could also grab hold of their wrists. So coming up, giving a pull back. If you do this, maybe they want their uh, palms facing in. When they're ready to come down, they can let you know they come to their opposite cheek to relax. You just take their lower back, give it a little wiggle making sure they're not holding any tension in that low back, 
maybe a little bit of lengthening. All right, and for the last one, just to make sure we have room, I'm gonna have Dan scoop forward just a little bit. Awesome. And this time I'm gonna grab hold of his feet. So as he comes up, his chest lifts, his legs lift. I'm gonna hold on his ankles and I'm gonna give a pull back, finding length here. And gently coming down. It could feel nice to apply some pressure, squeeze your partner's ankles, massage their calves. And if they're okay with you touching their feet, you can take your fist and press it into the sole of their foot maybe. So just exploring one another and practicing that that care for one another. Make sure to be the giver and the receiver, hitting pause, doing the same thing on the other partner. Okay, the last thing we're coming into is a lizard on a rock. So I'm going to talk you through this and then I'm going to show it to you because uh, Dan, doesn't want to come all the way down. It can be a lot of uh, pressure on the knees. It's a deep reflection in a deep child's pose. So again, if this is uncomfortable for any partner, make sure that you are skipping poses when needed if they don't feel right. So what will happen is one partner will come into that child's pose that we practiced at the beginning, and they're gonna take a blanket right over their back. Now, if you want to try childs, you're a little bit timid about the depth of the stretch. Having a block on the back of the heels to sit on, a block for the forehead might be nice. Also, the block under the forehead creates a little bit of breathing room for the person on the bottom. So then you'll place the blanket. I'm going to talk it through before we show you because once I'm down, it will be hard to hear me. He'll place the blanket on my back because he's going to be laying down onto my back and spine to spine can be a little bit uncomfortable. So placing that blanket and then you'll see he's going to sit his weight not too far up my back, but a little bit lower so that his arch over my back is also comfortable for his heart opening, chest opening stretch. Are you ready? Yep. Spot. Yeah, feels good for me. You might want to do this. Open your eyes to a crease. So I was a little higher than I usually am because I chose to have this block underneath me, which made it a, a little bit more gentle for me, which was nice but it kept me higher and maybe a little bit harder for Dan to balance on my back. So coming down with care and also know you have those options on top. You could either reach your arms overhead, maybe your partner is grabbing your hands as we did down here, or on top, you can open the arms wide. The last thing to close your practice, uh, a sweet Shavasana. So you'll just find a comfortable reclined posture. We're going to take a knee bent version here. 
and <laughs> maybe your cheek to cheek or your heads are next to one another. I'm just finding some connection as you close your practice in silence. Allow the body to restore. <laughs> <laughs>